Well, they said they would notify us in a week or so, and they didn't. So I figured that I had won the scholarship. And one day we got the letter in the mail. I didn't even open it. I just knew I had received the scholarship. And when I did, <laughs> I think all of Syracuse heard me. <laughs> Mention the name Jackie Robinson, and most of you probably conjure up memories of the first black in Major League Baseball, the most valuable player in 1949, the late, great Jackie Robinson of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Well, the Jackie we want to tell you about today was never really that interested in baseball, but her accomplishments in and out of school serve as a most valuable inspiration to students everywhere. This Jackie has just completed her freshman year at Syracuse University. Her main interest, studying in the radio and television field. Jackie's academic endeavors and her being on the SU campus had several beginnings. One, a four-year scholarship. Well, the National Council of Negro Women had heard about it, and my mother is vice president, and she brought home a flyer, and there was flyers distributed around town, and I had seen it up, and so I decided to apply. And what did you go through to win the scholarship? Oh, I had several interviews with Syracuse University and the faculty and staff of Newhouse School of Communications. And they interviewed me several times and asked me a lot of questions. I also had to make a tape on why I wanted the scholarship. What were some of the questions like? Do you recall? Oh, they just wanted to know my interest in radio and television, how I got interested in it, and so on. What about what went through your mind when you found out that you were going to receive the scholarship? Well, they said they would notify us in a week or so, and they didn't. So I figured that I had won the scholarship. And one day, we got the letter in the mail. I didn't even open it. I just knew I had received the scholarship. And when I did, <laughs> I think all of Syracuse heard me. <laughs> you thought that letter was uh, just a note to say, sorry, tough luck, but you didn't win it. Right, because it had been so long. we had waited so long for the letter. And so, one beginning of Jackie's college career. Her fascination in the field of broadcasting has an even more interesting origin. It began several summers ago when Jackie was visiting her grandmother in the South. Almost by accident, Jackie was introduced to radio broadcasting. She loved it. Those who heard her enjoyed it. Everything sort of clicked. My grandmother lives in Demopolis, Alabama, and we have a funeral home there. And every Sunday she goes on radio. And when I went down to visit her during the, during the summer, she would let me go on radio because I had a New York accent and they liked me going on radio. And I, that's where I first got started and I really enjoyed it. What types of things did you do on the radio there? Oh, I played records and I talked about their business and I talked about the sh sick and the shut-in like that. Although Jackie's first taste of broadcasting came relatively early in life, her first taste of hands-on broadcasting in college will have to wait until next fall. This year, Jackie's courses in communications were introductory in nature, aimed at acquainting her with the field. One exception was a tour of the educational broadcasting facilities at Syracuse University's Newhouse 2 Communications Center. During the tour, Jackie was able to get a first-hand idea of the type of project she'll be working on and studying. Projects like directing commercials and operating television cameras, lights, and microphones. Her reaction? Well, she thinks it's fantastic, especially since she thought she would have to wait until her third year at college before she would actually be able to begin working with broadcasting equipment. Jackie says she wants to experience as many of the different areas of broadcasting as she can, news, entertainment, sales, and management, before she chooses a field in which to specialize. Another of the beginnings of Jackie's education goes back to alma mater Cicero High School, where Jackie was a good student, well-liked, and well-remembered by her teachers, fellow students, and her guidance counselor for her four years at Cicero, Ms. Jean Lefevre. And Ms. Lefevre says it was obvious right off the bat that Jackie Robinson was not the type of student to settle for anything mediocre. 
I first noticed that uh, she was achievement-oriented, I guess. Uh, this would be the first clue I would have that uh, this was a student who wanted to get somewhere uh, to have some kind of a career. And um, when I saw that scholarship notice, it made me think of her because of uh, her attitudes towards achieving. Did she ever talk about the kind of career she wanted to get into? Uh, two or three times, you know, a year we would see them and talk to them about what they were thinking <coughs> of doing. And uh, it, But it's not until toward the senior year that they really get into uh, definite things. We try to get them started is what we do. In her senior year, did she talk about uh, specific goals, things she wanted to do in college and after college? Uh, she uh, made it obvious to me that she wanted a career that uh, was maybe a little better than average. Uh, she has gotten into uh, leaning toward a broadcasting career, and she's taking uh, radio and television courses, which seem to indicate that she likes people and likes to be around people. Is that the type of person she was in high school? Yes, she was always very friendly, and I think uh, one of the reasons that she liked school was that she could interact with the other people in the building. You know, this was uh, important to her. She seems to have a very competitive streak in her. Is, uh, you think her family had anything to do with that? I think so. Um, I've talked with her parents, and they seem to want their children to have good careers and uh, to achieve, get good grades. Ms. Lefevre recalls that in spite of the many problem categories some high school students fall into, the serious trouble they get into, Jackie just never seemed to have many problems. About the biggest dilemma for Jackie was trying to decide which courses to take. Jean Lefevre summed it up by saying that she considers Jackie a model student. As a matter of fact, she keeps a news photo of Jackie on her counseling office wall, along with the story of how Jackie won her four-year scholarship to Syracuse University. Ms. Lefevre says she uses the clip as an incentive to other students, hoping they will seriously yeah, consider what they may accomplish meeny, meeny, if they put as much effort into well, getting an education as Jackie that. does. And so it's just one more score. As Jean Lefevre mentioned, yeah, Jackie's mother and father had a significant influence on Jackie's desire to excel in school. Her family now lives in North Syracuse. Her father, Hubert Robinson, is a retired Air Force sergeant who now, in his second career, works for the General Motors Corporation. Jackie's mother works now for the city of Syracuse, and there still has been time for her and Hubert to raise their five children, with Mrs. Robinson serving as vice president of the National Council of Negro Women and participating in other community activities as well. And what with the Air Force transferring Hubert and his family all over Europe and the U.S. until his first retirement, the educational challenge was made even greater for Jackie. Nevertheless, when it came to schoolwork, Mrs. Robinson says she never had to push Jackie into studying, it was something she was just determined to do. <laughs> no, really I didn't. Jackie has always been the type that she wanted to make good grades. So she would study, and she had to study in order. She was no genius, so she would have to study. And uh, I don't recall ever really having to, you know, just get right down on her about doing a homework like I have with some of the younger ones. What do you think was the inspiration for her to study the way she did? Uh, her older sister? Yes, well, Vicki was a very good school student. Vicki, academically, she was always, she never had to study as hard as Jackie. And then, of course, uh, Jackie's grandmother, my mother, was a teacher. And um, I think she had an awful lot of influence on my children. Also, the teachers, they were always interested, and of course I was interested as an interested parent. I would go to the school and check on them, and they knew that I would do it. <laughs> and Jackie studied hard enough uh, to go all the way to be one of those included in, I think you mentioned, who's who in the USA as far as students go. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Vicki made who's who among American high school students. And then after that, uh, Jackie was just determined that she'd like to make it too. And uh, it uh, consists not only of the academic aspects, but the uh, community work and your activities at school. And she was very active anyway, so she was lucky enough to make it. <laughs> Jackie continued hot on the trail of her older sister Vicki's accomplishments. Vicki is at Hampton College studying for her teaching degree in elementary education. Jackie had been thinking a year ago of joining Vicki at Hampton, 
But Jackie's educational plans took a detour when her hard work in school paid off with the scholarship. We asked Vicki if her younger sister measures up to her concept of what a good student should be. Oh, yes. She likes to have her fun, but she also thinks her books are important. She didn't spend as much time with the books as you did. Um, did that surprise you that she didn't uh, more or less follow in your footsteps? No. Ever since we've been little, she's had her own way of doing things, and I have too, but we've gotten along surprisingly. You know, she's got her own interest, but a few things overlap, like music, for instance, and um, we both played the piano, and we took ballet, and we were in Girl Scouts together, so, you know. Did you ever try to influence Jackie in any way as far as her studies or her extracurricular activities? Not really. I just, you know, picked my own interests, and some of them she liked and saw the things that I was doing and wanted to do them. Of course, just like Vicki, Jackie has come upon a great deal of independence during her first year at college. She's been away from home a good deal of the time, and even though it's not much of a surprise to hear her say she is enjoying her new freedom, Jackie says she still must exercise a certain degree of caution. Up here, you're really on your own, so you have to discipline yourself. You have more responsibilities to yourself, to your studies, <laughs> to your family. My father says I don't know the value of money. <laughs> I'm a compulsive shopper. And I call home about every week. <laughs> I need money. <laughs> so. Well, there's so many things that you want, and there's so many expenses at college. It's just little things that add up, and so um, I'm not very good at budgeting. <laughs> so, heck with this. Although Jackie's father may not see her as adept at stretching her allowance, he says that doesn't lessen his pride in her and the good example she is setting for her three younger brothers. Hubert Robinson says Jackie's brothers were inclined to tease her about winning the scholarship at first, probably because they were a little envious. Nonetheless, he says they don't live in her shadow. To the contrary, Hubert says his three sons heed his advice to be their own person. Uh, each one may have something to offer or what they would like to be. Uh, this is what they um, should uh, strive for. What about uh, the things they want to do? Which way do they seem to be headed? Well, now like uh, Mandel, uh, you know, he's the, my oldest son. His uh, desire to be a professional football player. Now my oldest daughter is elementary school teacher. This is her desire. Jackie, she like uh, she likes the limelight more or less. Radio and TV. This is uh, her thing. And now my two younger boys. Well, I don't think they've uh, established themselves as yet of what they really want to be. Now, Eric, he's the second to the oldest, to my oldest boy. He's in the Explorers at General Motors. Uh, more or less, uh, they take young people out of uh, high school or start training them to be engineers. Now, he says he likes this, but I don't know if this is what he really wants. And my youngest son, he, he doesn't know yet of what he wants to do. You mentioned you were hopeful that Jackie, to use your expression, would pave the way. What did you mean? Well, by paving the way, I mean uh, being successful or uh, if uh, being a news correspondent, if this is what she really wanted to do to show that other blacks would be able to uh, can do the same thing as she has. Uh, had the opportunity of getting receiving that scholarship and making good of that scholarship. So not necessarily just for the members of the family, an example, but for uh, blacks everywhere. That's, that's true. That's right. And uh, I think this uh, one step forward for uh, black and white. And, uh, if uh, you don't have the funds to attend uh, Syracuse University and have an opportunity to go on a scholarship, and make good of it, uh, this builds up hopes for others not so fortunate. 
that uh, maybe one day they might be fortunate in winning the scholarship to do the same thing as she has uh, started out. It appears that Jackie's brother Mandel is going to be a fortunate scholarship winner too. Although he may have gotten his cue to strive for a scholarship from Jackie, Mandel, in keeping with his father's advice, is going about securing a scholarship in his own way. In spite of the fact that he likes playing basketball a great deal more than football, Mandel has had the foresight to realize he's a much better football player. In fact, as a running back, Mandel garnered numerous trophies, including a game ball for setting a high school rushing record that still stands. Mandel told us why he chose to go for a scholarship through athletics rather than academics like Jackie did. We are two different people. I mean, very different. Uh, she's got her set of values and I've got mine. And we go on ways. What about the scholarship now? You mentioned before that um, you were responsible enough to realize that there wasn't going to be enough money to send three people to college all at the same time. Uh, you kind of struck out on your own. Um, well, being the th way things are now, I knew that three of us being in the college at the same time would be rough on my parents, and we still got two younger brothers here. And so I always had a great interest in sports, and so I've tried to do my best. And I hope to get one. At this point, it looks as though Mandel's dream of getting a scholarship is sure to come true. He already has three offers from top college football organizations who probably would gladly extend a full scholarship for the likes of a football player who can move down the field like Mandel Robinson. And speaking of moving down the field, Jackie is no one to take a back seat. The trophies on the mantle in the Robinson home are not all Mandel's. A number of them are Jackie's for Jackie set a few high school records of her own participating in girls track. A little disappointed because her hopes of organizing girls track competition between dormitories on the SU campus didn't pan out, Jackie still likes to work out and talk about her beginning days of running track. In junior high school, they had um, the presidentials patch thing that you and everybody had to perform and do this this is something that we required of everybody in school it was the f president's physical fitness uh, achievement badge or whatever it right. was which I have several <laughs> and um, I did very well in it um, you had to run in it and you had to jump and exercise and whatever and I ran very well and I guess that's where I got started running the track from there you got interested in the uh, short distance events the dashes and so forth right um, which doesn't seem to parallel because I have long legs, which means that I should be running long distance and have a lot of endurance, but I don't. <laughs> I like short distances, and I'm much better at it. Didn't the length of your legs earn you a nickname once upon a time? Right. They used to call me legs in high school. <laughs> they, they told me that they used to look like they went on forever. But um, it was also a disadvantage because I had, I didn't use starting blocks to my last year of high school, my senior year. I used the standing start all this time because my legs are so long, it took me too long to get out of the blocks. <laughs> but I finally got over that hurdle. <laughs> Why didn't you use the starting blocks? Is that something your coach taught you not to do? I was faster. I was faster without the starting blocks, just standing up. So. Why didn't you stick with standing up instead of going to the starting blocks? Then? Well, they felt that um, it really wasn't fair and I could um, improve my, my, you know, time and distance. By, so I worked at it and worked at it and I finally accomplished it. Then in spite of the fact that you stuck with the dashes and the shorter distances, you wound up really uh, making a claim to fame in track statewide in the standing broad jump. How did that all come about? Well, we came to a meet and there was nobody to do the standing broad jump. And they just said, well, Jackie, why don't you go over there and try? And in fact, one of the, my competitors had to teach me how to do it. <laughs> and I won it. <laughs> and Jackie went on winning until she became number two in the state in the women's standing broad jump, the event that she had gotten started in by accident. But believe it or not, Jackie liked marching with the high school band even more than track. The band always came first. And Jackie wasn't long at Syracuse University before she tried out for and won a majorette position with the SU band. And after some practice sessions, it was the real thing during SU football games. Much of 
Jackie's life is filled with music. In addition to her work with the band, she put in over 10 years studying piano. Though she jokes, it was mainly at her mother's insistence. And music carries through to much of Jackie's social life on the weekends. Although it may not be a typical college weekend, a black freshman special weekend last winter shows how music fills a good part of Jackie's life. It started with a dance at one of the Syracuse University dining halls. Next stop on the weekend dance circuit was a formal ball, and that took a little getting ready for. Jackie and a friend made a special gown for the formal that was sponsored by a black fraternity on the SU campus, the Alpha Phi Alpha. At the formal, dancing, dining, and a ceremonial pageant. Each year, Alpha Phi Alpha selects a number of young girls to be angels, and the selection proved to be more good fortune for Jackie. I'm affiliated with the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity as an Alpha Angel. It's kind of an unusual arrangement, a girl becoming associated or affiliated with a, a men's fraternity. How does that work out? Well, the men have put on functions during the year for a social life for the black students. It is a black fraternity. And so in the beginning of the year, they select girls, and they have a tea, and they interview you, and you are therefore picked. And out of thir 30 girls, 13 girls were picked, and I was one of the 13. The old competition again, <laughs> up there a winner. Huh? <laughs> right. So I enjoy being a part of it. We help them put on parties, and we give a ball at the end of the year after putting on dances during the year that we charge a quarter or 25 cents for. And this weekend coming up, we're going to put on a picnic, which will be free, but you bring your own food. <laughs> Why no black women's sorority? Why don't you have one of your own? Um, they do. I, in fact, two of the sororities want me to pledge Delta or AKA. My mother was a Delta, and my sister was a Delta, but I'm pledging AKA. <laughs> oh, how do they respond to that? Well, they said make my own choice, but I'm not pledging to next semester. I felt my freshman year I should devote most of my time to my studies, and I really wanted to seek out and look at the sororities and see what I really wanted to get into. It's well Jackie decided to devote much of her freshman year to study. Because although we have painted a rather glamorous whirlwind picture of Jackie's first year in college, don't mistake the good times to mean that college is a soft touch. College is a lot more than music, marching, and dancing. It's long hours of studying, long walks to classes, long lectures, taking exams, then more long hours over the books. Jackie says when the going gets tough, she remembers a bit of her father's advice that if she is going to do something, she might as well be the best. That advice seems to give Jackie the determination she needs to overcome the many new distractions she encounters while cracking the books. At home, there was no disturbances. However, up here at school, your friends always drop by and telephone calls, and there's a lot of other distractions, and you're more apt to fool around. <laughs> your mother said at home she more or less laid down strict rules, and uh, you okay. and your brothers and sisters understood that the studying came before the play. Do you have trouble making yourself study? No, I know that it has to get done. And I don't like to procrastinate, so I do do my work. You spent some time out at your old high school, Cicero High School. Uh, we talked to your guidance counselor there. I was wondering if you feel that high school really prepared you for college. They try and prepare you. Your guidance counselors give you a lot of counseling and things. But college and high school is a large step. And I don't feel that schools have really reached the point where you are prepared when you get to college. But after your freshman year, <laughs> you'll know. <laughs> you were involved in quite a few extracurricular activities, track at Cicero High School, the band and so forth. Do you find the same opportunities here at SU to do those sorts of things? I find that you have less time to do those sort of things, but I try and make it like I am in band, and it is pushing it a little to try and be in extracurricular activities up here, you know, while you, you're doing your studies, because the workload at college is a lot harder. 
One complaint we hear from students is that once you become a freshman in college, all of a sudden you're a number on an IBM card somewhere, a computer card, instead of uh, more or less a, a closer relationship with the teachers. Do you find it like that in the, in the classrooms here? Right. Uh, the classrooms have anywhere from 300 to four, 500 students, and therefore you don't have a teacher-student relationship. Um, you don't really get a chance to make yourself known. You're just another name or number. I have a suspicion that before you're done here, you will become <laughs> known. You were quite well known at, at Cicero High School. Are there other things that uh, this first year gave you some problems or bothered you a little bit about college as you tried to adjust? No, not really. I really enjoyed it. I like meeting the students, and there are people here at Syracuse from every walk of life, and, you know, you've just lived only a part of it, and you get to experience it by living with them, talking with them, going to school with them each and every day. With all these activities, her studies, her new friends, Jackie still finds time to fulfill something very important to her, her religious beliefs. Jackie has always been very active in church, and still finds time each Sunday to attend services, usually with her family. She also feels that religion and the church have a very positive influence on her ability to excel both in the classroom and on the athletic field. In fact, in everything she does. Where are all her experiences leading her? Well, Jackie says right now about the only thing out of the question is marriage. Oh, uh, right now I'm leaning towards my career first. I'm not really ready to settle down. I think after I graduate, I want to work, I want to travel. And if I got married and wanted to raise a family, that would tie me down to responsibilities. Right now, I have a little wild blood in me. And <laughs> I want to just get out and around and travel. I think you mentioned that was especially true with a career, if you want to pursue a career in broadcasting. Right, and um, broadcasting, as I learned in one of the lectures, they said that you had to keep late hours, you had to work weekends, which is not the ideal life for a family because you couldn't spend the time with your family when they most needed you. When you'd be getting home, they'd be in the bed, and so on. Not very good odds, giving up your weekends, holidays, working nights, and so forth. Why in the heck would you pursue a career in broadcasting? Well, if you really... If you really like your career, that's what you want to do. It's worth giving it up.